There was darkness in the deep, and water without form, and there was a subtle breath, intelligent, which permeated the things in Chaos with divine power. Then, when all was yet undistinguished and unwrought, there was shed forth holy light, and the elements came into being. All things were divided one from another, and the lighter things were parted off on high, the fire being suspended aloft so that it rose unto the air, and the heavier things sank down, and sand was deposited beneath the watery substance, and the dry land was separated out from the watery substance and became solid, and the fiery substance was articulated with the gods therein, and heaven appeared with its seven spheres, and the gods visible in starry forms with all their constellations, and heaven revolved and began to run its circling course, riding upon the divine air. And each god, by his several power, set forth that which he was bidden to put forth. And there came forth four-footed beasts, and creeping things, and fishes, and winged birds, and grass, and every flowering herb, all having seed in them according to their diverse natures. For they generated within themselves the seed by which their races should be renewed. You must understand, then, that God is pre-existent and ever-existent, ever-existent, and that he alone made all things and created by his will the things that are. And when the creator had made the ordered universe, he willed to set in order the earth also. He willed to set in order the earth also. And so he sent down man, a mortal creature, made in the image of an immortal being, to be an embellishment of the divine body. For it is man's function, here it comes, the purpose of man, for according to Book 4, for it is man's function to contemplate the works of God, and for this purpose he was made, that he might view the universe with wondering awe, and come to know its maker. Man has this advantage over all other living beings, that he possesses mind and speech. Now speech, my son, God imparted to all men, but mind he did not impart to all. Not that he grudged it to any, for the grudging temper does not start from heaven above, but comes from being here below in the souls of those men who are devoid of mind. This introduces the concept of, the, of an elect, or a perfecti, a, a hierarchy of human, of human accomplishment and understanding. And this is also basic to Gnosticism. It's not for everyone, they're saying. It's for the pure of heart. And then what pure of heart means depends on the school you're looking at. You know, for some, it was mathematical accomplishment. For others, it was contact with the Logos. For others, it was an ability to resist the temptations of the senses. But there was always this sense of the higher and lower possibility within the human experience. Everybody with me so far? Uh, okay, this is uh, book, uh, book 12. Now this whole cosmos, which is a great God and an image of him who is greater and is united with him and maintains its order in accordance with that will is one mass of life and there is not anything in the cosmos nor has been through all time from the first foundation of the universe neither in the whole nor among the several things contained in it that is not alive. There is not and has never been and never will be in the cosmos anything that it is dead. For it was the Father's will that the cosmos, as long as it exists, should be a living being, and therefore it must needs be a God also. How then, my son, could there be dead things in that which is a God, in that which is an image of the Father, in that which is one mass of life? 
Deafness is corruption, and corruption is destruction. How then can any part of that which is incorruptible be corrupted, or any part of that which is a god be destroyed?